Now, for most new mothers, the birth of a baby is usually the best gift life can offer. Such mothers take time to bond with their newborn babies while relatives and friends share in the celebration. However, for certain women, the birth of their babies is usually the onset of terrible depression. They lose the will to live and attempt to kill themselves as well as their babies. Doctors say such women suffer from postpartum depression but are unable to talk about their feelings because of the fear of being judged by society. Tonight, Linda Ogutu tells the story of two women who went through postpartum depression and lived to tell the tale. You've just had this wonderful baby and everyone around you is ecstatic. Everyone that is except you. For you, life has come to a standstill. You suddenly do not want motherhood or your child. And you have this compelling feeling to end your life and that of your baby. It's a feeling that a woman we will call Mary knows too well. From the minute she had her daughter, she wanted her dead. She hoped that God in his mercy would find a way to kill the child and save her from her misery. And that hope came alive two days after she had what was supposed to be her bundle of joy. Her baby had difficulty in breathing. And even when the doctors took her baby, she hoped God would answer that prayer. <laughs> The baby survived and that only served to irritate her. She did everything and anything to make it clear that she wanted nothing to do with the child. Her husband noticed that his wife behaved differently from other mothers in the neighborhood. She would look for any excuse not to be near her daughter. <laughs> Dr. Kanyanya of Kenyatta National Hospital says if Mary had gone through that experience for two to three days, she would have suffered from baby blues. It usually occurs earlier than the postpartum depression. Earlier in the sense that it is like two to three, two to five days is when it occurs. And usually it is very transient. However, sometimes it is a precursor to postpartum depression. Unfortunately, things did not change for Mary two months after she had had her baby. Kanyanya says Mary was suffering from postpartum depression, a kind of depression that new mothers go through but few dare to talk about. It is a form of depression that occurs after delivery, usually within two weeks to around eight weeks after delivery. <laughs> It can begin any time during the first two months after you give birth. Some of the symptoms to look out for include anxiety and worry, anger, crying, irritability and exhaustion. These symptoms can occur any time in the first year postpartum and may affect women who have suffered miscarriage. It may last several months or even a year. Lucky for Mary, she got medication and is now well. Hey, if I wasn't on medicine, I... Things did not go down that well for Janet. A tough pregnancy was the beginning of her nightmare. And the minute her son was born, she did not think she was worth raising him up. And the signs were all there. So it reached a point where when he'd cry, I'd get really... Um, just um, irritable. Things went downhill from there and she tried to commit suicide twice. She says she had no plans to hurt her baby. All she wanted to do was to end her own life. But before she did that, she reminded each of her family members of just how much she loved them. Her doctor was to later tell her that these were the alert bells. Um, I kissed the babies, put them to sleep, you know, all that. Then uh, I waited for him to sleep. 
So uh, after that, I just remember waking up and there's all these empty cartons of medicine. And it was, it was so horrible because I had to vomit. He was, bath, you know, sitting on the bathing, um, what is it called? The yeah, the basin. And I just, at that point, decided to take bleach. And I took bleach and I blacked out and he's in the water and there's no one else in the house. It's an experience a husband remembers clearly. You know, the first thing is shock. Uh, then the, f the next thing you wonder, you know, who do you save? Do you save the, the, the boy or the mom? So it was quite a difficult scenario. She had to be admitted in hospital. And so they looked for the fastest way to bring her brain back to a functional state. And mostly it's because I felt I was not an adequate mom. And, you know, the, they take you through therapy, they take you through, I mean, all these type of things. But um, it didn't work. So finally, they decided, let's try ECT, um, electroconvulsive therapy, where they, they, they put a shock to your brain. It's like to reboot the brain, because I was really, really suicidal, really, really depressed. And there's no way I would come up to the outside world and be productive in that kind of state. And while all that was happening, a husband took charge of the family. In his words, it drained him. Nights became unbearable because at night you would really get sick. Uh, so I don't know why it's sometimes, you know, in her condition it hits badly at night. And now, then I didn't have the house up in the house, so I'd have to take care of both because the, my son was around four months old. In fact, I couldn't manage that. Uh, my sisters uh, luckily called me and they were like, man, you cannot handle this as a human being. You cannot be working during the day and then spending the whole night awake, you know, taking care of them. You know you love your family. But uh, let's come in and help. Janet is so much better now. She's learned to take care of her son and her family, even though they both admit it has not been easy. There is no particular cause of postpartum depression, but it has been associated with lack of family support for new mothers. Genetics also play a role, but the most predominant cause is the trauma of childbirth. If you suffer uh, 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 trauma of some sort around the uh, delivery, then most like, I mean, you stand higher chances of developing postpartum post depression. Then the family support system, the environment, the family setting, the way it is. If you have a lot of support, you are less likely to develop postpartum depression. The symptoms and signs of postpartum depression are no different from the normal depression, but there is a red flag. The patient may experience suicidal thoughts and infanticide. For such patients, the thoughts center on disturbing and violent thoughts that may involve harming the baby somehow, such as stabbing the baby with knives, putting the baby in the oven, anything to end its life. For them, life is simply not worth living. Usually their thinking is this way, that... Uh um, I, I have no future, there is nothing that I look forward to and I don't want when I'm not there my baby to suffer. They mean well, if we may say so. They kill their baby and then they also kill themselves. The reason they kill the baby first is because they know they are also going to die. So they don't want to leave their baby to die. He remembers a case he had to deal with recently. It involved a 25-year-old mother who had developed symptoms of postpartum depression within weeks after delivery. She had been found trying to drop the young infant into a pit latrine. By that time, she had psychotic symptoms and several beliefs that simply did not exist. She was put on medication and with time, she got better and went back home. However, she refused to take her medication a few weeks later. Unfortunately, when she reached home, uh, she traveled up country. And once she reached up country, she just committed suicide. It was uh, very traumatic, but... Uh, it shows the seriousness of this thing. It can actually mean, it can take away the life of the mother, the life of the baby. Seeing a doctor immediately one notices the symptoms of depression can be the difference between life and death. Cultural beliefs in the society have over time made it difficult for such women to seek help or even talk about the experience with family members. The family tries now to put their hands off of her and they feel like 
their son may have married a mad woman. The first stop should be a general doctor. Such doctors can diagnose the problem and if need be can refer such cases to psychiatrists. However, it is not and should not be a death sentence either for a new mother or a child. It is, however, important that one learns how to cope with postpartum depression. Be good to yourself. Make sure your own basic needs are met. Ask for support. Part of being a mother is knowing when to ask for help and to talk to someone about how you feel. Should you ever realize that you suffer from postpartum depression, these are the most important things to remember. Postpartum depression is a medical condition that is treated by medicine. You are not the one to blame for suffering from postpartum depression. I appeal to your family members to understand what you are going through and to offer you all the support that they can give to you. Help, let them help you to get medical treatment. Let them stand by you, support you, and that support in itself is therapeutic. It will be helpful in the healing process. Linda Ogutu, KTN.